to sort of fuel your imagination of what's possible with the cognition aid, we also we generated a second application here. Um, in this case, it's sort of a medley of all the different functionalities implemented in eCognition 8. It makes use of the MAPS concept, it uses LiDAR data, um, and it also uses object generalization. Again, I created a little clip here. Um, we will start up the software. Actually, we started up in quick map mode, um, which means it's sort of the simple user interface. And instead of using the quick map solution or library, um, a second library is loaded, which is a LiDAR analysis library, which was built for that purpose. And since the, the different actions aren't yet defined, you can simply load a solution file, which will then sort of preset all the different actions of that application. So first of all, after loading the solution again, you have a data loading step. In this example, we use color infrared data in combination with LiDAR. Um, color infrared data is loaded as you're used to loading it. The LiDAR data, that's now a novelty, is loaded by simply selecting an LAS point cloud file, which will be directly brought into the software. There's a resolution the user has to enter, which sort of defines the spacing and the size of the project. Once the data is loaded, you can then browse through the different channels. So the red, green, um, blue and color red or near infrared channels are as you're used to seeing them. The LiDAR, on the other hand, will be brought up per default as intensity. So you will see the intensity of the LiDAR with holes in it where no LiDAR points are. And now the LiDAR algorithm allows you to extract additional layers from that layer. So in this example, we built three different steps creating uh, a DSM first return, DSM second return, and a normalized DSM, which will generate those layers which you actually need to perform your analysis um, automatically. So you can see the layers coming up behind me, different um, temporary layers generated based on the LiDAR. And then you can very easily classify that data set by combining the different elevation informations with the, uh, the color infrared data. And that again is simply done on the click of a mouse. You can implement sliders, for example, for um, calibrating the data set on near infrared, for example, or um, the elevation. And in this example, we've also actually implemented an undo functionality, which is based on the concept of maps. So if you perform an analysis or a step which you don't like, you can simply hit the undo button and it will undo that functionality. So now you can see that the buildings have been neatly generalized. You also have a sort of a um, sensitivity slider, which allows you to define whether to strongly generalize or not so strong. Same for the trees. And if you overdo one of those steps, you can simply undo it. You step back one step and you can try it uh, with a different setting. But since many applications are also or also need a certain manual check or, or sort of a quality assurance step, we also implemented a new functionality which is an, an sort of an object table type which allows you to bring up all objects of a certain class and very neatly browse through those objects in your application. So once the automatic part is done, you can use that area to quickly step through objects one by one and then either assign them to a certain class, so for example, all the accepted objects go in one class, all the objects which are actually misclassified go to the other class. Um, but you can also perform real applications on it, like you can click an object and say, well, that object isn't aligned the right way. So you hit the rotate left or right button and that object will rotate into its right position. And as I said, this is all implemented using developer aid. So essentially in the background, there are processes running and the top left buttons just steer and define and execute these processes. Again, all the steps performed can be saved as a solution file. So you can automatically analyze large stacks of data using the automatic part. And again, you can sort of steer and, and guide the, the, the subject matter expert in how to use and, and what steps to perform in such an application. So you can also make sure that if you transfer that to a different area or, or if you do the same analysis a second time, it's going to be um, performed or analyzed exactly the same way. 